have an ancient and complicated and necessary relationship with water. We're also very, very fragile. And now we want to bring you the latest news on that giant oil rig which exploded and burned and now has sunk into the ocean off the coast of Louisiana. No one from BP ever had time for us. Nobody ever said, we're sorry Gordon died on our rig. This oil will be washing up. There'll be tar balls and tar mats on wherever the beach is, almost forever. We knew that in the beginning. What I see happening here, we will defeat ourselves from within because we'll destroy our water and our air. This was the ground zero to the oil spill. Looks like it was hit with napalm. Every time we have a really bad weather front, it starts that exposure all over again. And time and time again, the responsible party for that will fight tooth and nail to say, it's not from us. Two years ago, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration took 31 place names off the chart because they don't exist anymore. The coastal erosion is the biggest crisis that we have. We continue to lose roughly a football field worth of land every 45 to 50 minutes. The oil industry's own study concluded the overwhelming cause of the land loss was industry operations. We're under a massive assault. We have great environmental laws, but they're just not well enforced. The argument is, are you going to try to save jobs or are you going to try to save the environment? And I think that that's a false choice. The opportunities of this are breathtaking. We have a chance to make something the world desperately needs. Develop a technology that affects hundreds of millions of people. Our forefathers gave us the power to change the entire government with a little piece of paper. You don't have to be a rich man to stand up and be counted. We've literally got a chance to change the world. But we're in danger of losing all of this.